We have been discussing about various tools for data collection a researcher can use. There are many such tools like checklist, questionnaire, interview schedule, observation schedule, different types of scales like rating scales, opinionaire, attitude scale and many others. Today we will see about rating scale. Rating scale is basically a scale, a continuum and it is used for getting personal judgment of the rater. This is a judgment for evaluation of a personal trait. We can quantify the judgment of a personality, of attitude, of opinion because it can be quantified. There are categories and the rater is expected to put a tick mark on a continuum on a given statement. There is a series of statements given and on the horizontal line there, is, there are categories or there, are, there is a continuum. On the horizontal line with, where there is a scale, for, on the scale there are various points, 3 point, 5 point, 7 points and every point on the scale has a numerical value to it. So whenever somebody puts a tick mark there, you can quantify that statement. Rating scale can have 3 points, it can have 5 points, it can have 10 points, it can have 7 points. Please see this example. We can have average, good and excellent. It is a 3 point rating scale. You also can have poor, average, good, very good and excellent. This becomes a 5 point rating scale. If you have a middle point, then there is a tendency to mark there. That is, this is called a central tendency error. In order to avoid that, instead of having odd numbers, we can have even numbers. There can be 4 point scale, there can be 6 point scale, but generally odd numbers are used. See another example of rating scale. There are 3 different types. One is type A. You see that there are 7 points. Very easy, easy, quite easy, neither, quite hard, hard and very hard. All these categories are given on the scale. So the rater is supposed to mark on that scale. The second type if you can see that is from very easy to very hard and there is nothing written in between, only there are points. So the rater has to judge on a continuum from very easy to very hard. The third type shows you the marks or the score. It is from easy to hard, of course you can have it from very easy to very hard, but instead of showing the categories, it is given the score 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So the rater is supposed to put a tick mark or a circle around the number based on his or her judgment about the trait. In this example, you can see a visual rating scale. There are faces starting from no hurt to hurts worst. And you see that they have shown the emotions and the reader has to put a tick mark accordingly. In this example, you will see that in the first column you have objectives. Objectives can be listed, objectives of internship, objectives of a project and horizontally you have to what extent these objectives are achieved. For example, achieved, some progress, no progress at all. And on that continuum you can put a tick mark. Another example is a 5 point scale. In the first column, this is also about internship, about the intern received adequate guidance and mentoring. And the continuum is of 4 categories. One is highly satisfactory, satisfactory, unsatisfactory and highly unsatisfactory. There is one more category which is not applicable or not observed. That is also possible. Another example which has 5 categories. One is excellent, very good, average, clearly below average and unacceptable. Using these categories, we will see how a rating scale can be created. In the first column about the intern, you have several items and on the horizontal line, you have a continuum showing that five categories. The items could be the intern is enthusiastic, is cooperative, is well-mannered, is culturally respectful and then you have to rate on 5 point scale. The sixth is not applicable and there can be a column for remark. There are many different types of rating scales. Let us see 
what are different types first is graphic or continuous rating scale narrative or descriptive rating scale numerical rating scale behaviorally anchored rating scale it is called b a r s bars let us see each one of these types in detail first is graphic or continuous rating scale the graphic rating scale is a non comparative rating scale it doesn't have statements or categories which are comparing each other criteria are given as you can see here they have to put a tick mark on the scale another type is narrative or descriptive type of rating scale as the word suggests there is a description of the categories for example poor or excellent or average these are the descriptions given now the applicant are rated or your respondents are rated how well they meet the mandatory or desirable selection criteria or whatever criteria you have decided to rate now you see that poor average and excellent but continuum has many categories under poor under average under excellent you have to rate them accordingly numerical rating scale as the name indicates it is there are numbers so the scale naturally is along with various criteria or statements and horizontally they are to be rated and while rating each section is numbered a score is attached to each one of the categories for example if the category is from never to always then each category will have a number associated with it a score associated with it that is why this scale is called numerical rating scale in this rating scale it is also possible that we divide this into several uh, sub points and each point is given some kind of a score for example you are preparing a rating scale on problem solving ability now this is divided into four areas defines the problem identifies cause of the problem identifies possible solutions and recommends the solution now each of these four aspects are numerically scored for example defines a problem will get two points identifies cause of the problem will have three points because identifying causes is higher order identifies possible solutions is again higher order it gets three points and recommends a solution gets two points now total points is 10 the problem solving ability it's divided into four various aspects this is also a kind of a rating scale behaviorally anchored rating scale as the name suggests we are talking about behavior and we are anchoring this behavior into some areas now for example the researcher is interested in finding out the effective workers and not so effective workers or ineffective workers then their behavior areas can be identified what it means to be effective and what it means by ineffective and then on the rating scale we are supposed to rate for this a job analysis is done for example a middle level manager he or she is not a decision maker but executor so what are the things required to be an effective middle level manager those are identified and then a scale is created this scale has the statements which are describing the behavior of a particular job the scale here can be 3 point or 5 point instead of giving numbers we also can have narratives so every column has a narrative and that distinguishes the behavior from effective to not so effective you can see example here from counter productive to superior now on this there are no numbers but description is given counter productive ineffective adequate full performance and superior performance the rater can rate individual on these lines behaviorally anchored rating scale is used generally to evaluate competencies skills as well as abilities 
this is extremely valid. You know what is valid. Valid means a tool really tests what is supposed to test. This tool is based on the job performance. That's why it is identified. All job performance related statements are identified and that's why the tool is highly valid. The objective benchmarks are provided of the behavior which is to be rated and that is why the rating error is much less. Now let us see how a rating scale is constructed. It is a scale, so it has two aspects. One is the statements to be rated and other is the scale. So firstly, we should start with the continuum to be measured and it can be divided into optimal number. We can decide whether we should have a five point rating scale or seven point rating scale. And what is that rating which we would like to have? Secondly, the continuum should not have a break. It is a continuum. The word continuum means there is a continuity. There are two poles, positive and negative. They need to be alternated. This means that we cannot have all positive examples. We cannot always start with all the statements should not be positive. There could be some negative and some positive statements so that while a person is rating, there should not be a mindset to rate at a particular point. By alternating positive and negative statements, we try to avoid this. For this rating scale, we have identified the traits. Now for every trait, we prepare statements. There could be a statement or there could be a question. This question is to be answered by the rater by putting a tick mark into a continuum. For the continuum, we use descriptive adjectives. We describe it. We cannot just say it happens. We should say what is the frequency always or sometimes or we should say strongly agree, strongly disagree. These are the words, adjectives which we generally use to describe the continuum. While preparing this continuum, we also should decide what is the extremes. Should we start never to always or are we interested from sometimes to many times or the higher frequency? We have to decide what are the extreme points of our continuum. Similarly, when we use the descriptors, they should be universally acceptable. Somebody should not interpret it differently because then the observation will be different if people are interpreting your described descriptors differently. While defining the points on a continuum, we generally use descriptors and these are adjectives. We have to be extra careful in using those adjectives and they should be universally understood. They should not be interpreted differently by different raters. The researcher must decide beforehand the two extremes what it is. Are we starting from never to always? Are we starting from strongly disagree to strongly agree? These extremes need to be decided beforehand. These extremes should not be so extreme that people try to avoid them because then generally the tendency is not to go to other extreme. So if we have the extreme is so strong, the raters would try to avoid that. So the researcher has to be careful in deciding on the two other extremes. Once these statements of the traits are ready and once the continuum is ready, then the tool is ready, but not for use. We also have to think about how we are going to score. What score would we giving? The middle will get zero. Then on the left hand side, if it is negative, can it be minus one, minus two, plus one, plus two? Or is it from one to five? We have to decide beforehand how we are going to score it. Now the tool is ready for two things. One is we have to establish the validity and we have to establish the reliability. And now we know how to establish validity. We can validate it using content validity and give it to experts and ask them, these are the objectives, this is what we want to rate and then see whether the statements and the continuum matches. So this content validity can be established. Then reliability also needs to be established and we know that test test reliability can be used. You give the same test to the same group after 15 days and see whether the coefficient of correlation is high. It should be about 0.8 to 0.9. 
that would tell you that your tool is reliable. It is not misinterpreted. The words are understood by the raters. Once the reliability and validity is established, then the tool is ready for pilot testing. Then you have to select a small sample which represents the population, but this is not the sample which you will select for actual study. It is similar to that sample and then try it out on them. And if it works, then your tool is ready for use. Rating scales are used to evaluate skills, product outcomes, activities, interest, attitude, and even personal characteristics. The rating scales which evaluate or assess attitudes are known as attitude scales or opinion air. We will be studying this tool in the next session. Now let us see what are the advantages of using rating scales. One advantage is as compared to checklists, it provides more information and that is why it is more valid, it is more easy to rate. Because we are giving more information, sufficient information, the reliability also increases. Generally the rating scales are structured and standardized. They are not open ended, we are not asking them question what is your opinion about. We are giving them the statements and we are asking the raters to rate. So they are structured and many a times they are standardized and that is why it can be used for the entire workforce or a group whom you want to rate because they are standardized. Generally the descriptors on the continuum are known to the raters and that ambiguity is taken out and that's why it is easy to rate, easy to understand and that's why they are very popular and widespread use of the rating scale is seen. Even in the questionnaire, when we prepare a questionnaire, we can use rating scale as a part of questionnaire. Because it is easily understood, we don't need to have highly trained staff. They also can be used in early detection of any fault or any shortcoming because they are easy to rate. It's not that it has all the advantages, it also has limitations. Because it is rated by a human being, you can see that there are always perceptual errors. These are called as halo effect and horn effect. What is halo effect? When you think that these people are good, they are very hard working, that means the rater before and only thinks that whatever they are doing is good and that's why they are rated on high level rating scale. On the contrary, if you know the rater has a bad opinion about the people that they are lethargic, they are not taking any initiative, so whatever they are doing, we will see that they are not doing good. It also happens that if we know that these people are not so good, then we tend to be more harsh with them. It's not so with the people who, who are friendly with you or whom you know beforehand they are doing good work. So you try to become lenient to them whereas you try to become very harsh to people whom you may know that they are not so good or they are not working, they are not hard working people, they are not putting in their best efforts. This also can be your perception. As a rater, this can be a perception. Maybe perceptions can be wrong also. But this has effect on the rating of that person. Other error is perceived meaning. Perceived meaning of the statements which we have used and perceived meaning of the continuum we have used. If that is not really clear, then the rating what is given gets affected. That is why the language used in describing the traits, as we say the statements or the questions should be such that it is understood by everyone. Similarly, the descriptors used on the continuum also must be so that everyone understands the meaning of it. It is the motive of a rater which has effect on the rating. It is the motive of the appraiser or the rater which has effect on the rating. We have also seen in other tools that there is an error of central tendency. Generally, people don't want to be harsh or do not want to give them the advantage of extreme praise. So they tend to mark them or rate them in the middle. 
So, this is called a central tendency error and that is why your judgment, your valuation, evaluation gets affected. We have seen earlier that generally the rating scale is structured and standardized. The standards which we use, they should be very clear. If they are open to interpretation, then the rating gets affected. In this session, we have seen what is rating scale, when it is used, its characteristics, its advantages as well as its limitations. It is a very versatile tool, easy to use, but when you use it, you have to be extra careful that the rating is done as objectively as possible. Thank you.